Hello, I'm back again. This is David de Alba with another story, anecdote from my long run at the world famous Finocchio Club in San Francisco, California. The house of the fabulous female impersonators. That's the way the show was introduced. Mr. Sigfeld glorified the American girl, but here at Finocchio's, we glorify the American boy. That's the way Carol Watts used to announce the show. So here, Laverne Cummings, uh, he used to take out his own hair over the wig to make it look real because he didn't want to use a glue on wig. So he would bleach his hair to make sure the roots were pale blonde to match the wig. At one time, the hair became a little bit gray and dark roots. So one night when he pulled the wig, Mr. Finocchio saw him at the wings, he says, boy, uh, why, why don't you bleach the roots of your hair? They let it look black. And Laverne said, Mr. Finocchio, with the money I'm getting, I don't have enough money to buy bleach. I was shocked because he never took the way to Mr. Finocchio. Anyway, there was a story another time, Laverne, he heard there was a producer that was going to do some kind of a, a fruit of the loom uh, commercial for men's underwear. And he thought, well, let me, impr uh, let me uh, impress him. So he says to Mr. Finocchio, Mr. Finocchio, do you mind if I pay myself for a bass player so he can play? I don't know what the, Laverne did that because, because anyway, I, I guess he had a very fancy arrangement. He wanted a bass for that particular song to impress the producer. Anyway, although he said, I'll pay for the bass player, Mr. Finocchio's Answer was, uh, oh no no, we don't have we don't have a, a, enough a room on the stage, uh, Laverne, for a, a better player. Otherwise, the Finocchio is better fall and trip over. And anyway, with a better player, bring me more customers for my show. And Laverne answered, no, it won't bring you more customers, but it will add more class to the show. Oh, I said to myself, oh my God. Laverne, you're getting into half far by uh, at Finocchio's, Carol Wallace, the MC, used to say to me, there's two kinds of treatments. Some people are treated as pets, P-E-T-S, and some people are treated as pest, P-E-S-T-S. -S. Laverne was Mr. Finocchio's pet. I guess I wasn't anybody's pet, so I was in between the pet and the pest. I was in the middle, so I was very careful what, what not to say or what to do. But I was never a, uh, a kissing at the end of the show like some of the boys, oh, Miss Finocchio, you look beautiful. No, because I'm not hypocritic. I would say good evening, good night, but no kissy kissy, just to be on good graces. Maybe I should have more kissy kissy, but I last longer. But anyway, there is a song that I, uh, when I perform, I, ne I never got to sing this song at Finocchio's, but when I perform as Judy Garland here in, Las Vegas, several fans would ask me while I was on the stage, please sing Smile. This is a song that Charlie Chaplin wrote and that Judy sang. Of course, her arrangement had harp and violins. It was just a grand experience. So I had to do it in a very modest way, a cappella. <clears throat> anyway, this is to bid you good night with this song until next time i see you with more interesting stories about my life and finocchio's smile though your heart is aching smile even though it's breaking when there's a cloud in the sky you'll get by if you smile through your fear and sorrow smile and maybe tomorrow the sun will come shining through for you light up your face with gladness hide every trace 
of sadness, although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness, although a tear may be ever so near that's the time you must keep on trying smile what's the use of crying you'll find that life is still worthwhile if you Just smile. Good night and God bless.